Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever y'all in the world. My name is Sir Lucius L. Leftfoot, AKA Daddy Fat Sacks, AKA Hot Tub Tony, AKA Sylvester the Unskippable, AKA Big Boy One Half of the Mighty Outcast, and I'm here to read you the Christmas story, classic, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the full edition. So every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why no one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on quite right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was like the horn outside, y'all. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's. Cartoons hating. Staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow's Christmas is practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers, nervously drumming, I must find a way to keep Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the who Girls and boys will wake up bright and early, they rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated, the noise, 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 noise. Then the who's young and old would sit down to a feast, and they feast, and they feast, and they feast, and they feast. They would start on who pudding and rare who roast beast which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they do something he liked, they, they do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close, together with Christmas bells ringing. They stand hand in hand and the Who's would start singing. They sing and they sing and they sing and they sing. And the more the Grinch thought of the Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I put up with it now, I must stop Christmas from coming, but how? Did he got an idea, an awful idea? The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat, and he chuckled and chuckled with a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and his hat, I look just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog, Max. Come here, Max. Then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and he hitched up old Max. Then Grinch said, giddy up, and the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air, and all the Who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first house in the square, this stopped number one, the old Grinchy claws hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could get do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out on the, of the fireplace flue. Where the little who stockings all hung in the row, these stockings he grinned are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk, a smile most unpleasant around the whole room, and he took every fucking present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboard, tricycles, popcorn and plums. He stuffed them in the bags, then he grinched very nimbly. Stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox, he took the Who's feast, he took the Who pudding, he took the roast beast. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash, while that Grinch even took the last can of Who hash. Damn, they had hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee, and now grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou Who, who was not more than two. 
The Grinch had been caught by this little who daughter who's got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why, why are you taking our Christmas tree, why? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie and he thought it up real quick. Why my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied, there's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. Pimpin'. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then I'll bring it back here. Phil fooled the child. Then he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her ass to bed. And when Cindy Lou, who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. The last thing he took was the long log for the fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. He did the same thing to the other who houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other who's mouses. It was a quarter past dawn, all the who's still a bed, all the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up, up the side of the Mount Crumpet, he rode to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's, he was Grinch-ishly humming. They're finding out now that ain't no Christmas coming. They're just waking up. No, they're just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. The all the who's down in the Whoville will all cry boo hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused and the Grinch put a hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad, why well, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was, was merry, very merry. He stared down at Whoville, the Grinch popped his eyes and he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise, every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small was singing without any present at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming, it came somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, Stood puzzling and puzzling, how could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of it something he hadn't thought of before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he brought back the toys and the food for the feast, and he himself, the Grinch carved the roast beast. And that's how he did it. Thank you. I would like to wish you and yours a very happy holidays or season skeetings from the one and only Big Boy. Happy Swallow Days, and we'll see you have a new year.